As teachers, we all want our students to be kind to one another. One of the best ways that I know to teach them that is to use picture books. So come join me by the fire as we discuss five different books that you can use to teach kindness in your classroom. Let's go. Hi everyone, I'm so glad that you could join me to talk about my five favorite kindness books to share in the classroom. So I hope you have your warm drink in hand and are ready to join me next to my um, fake fireplace as we talk about five different books that you can use in your classroom to talk about kindness with your students. If you stick around to the very end, I have a full interactive read aloud lesson that you can download for free and use right away in your classroom with one of the books that I'm gonna share. And can we talk about my new mug? How neat is this? I love it. The first book that I wanna share with you today is called I Walk with Vanessa. In this story, there's a young girl who's new to school and on the way home, she's bullied by one of the other children in her class. There's another girl who stands by and sees this bullying happen, but she's not really sure what to do. She knows that she really wants to help the new student out, but doesn't know what she should do. She thinks about it all day and all night. She finally decides to go to the girl's house in the morning and walks with her to school. And this simple act of kindness inspires all the other students in the school and they join in and walk together with Vanessa to school to show that they are welcoming her and that they are standing up to the bully as well. It's such a simple yet powerful story. It really explores how oftentimes we feel helpless when we see a bully or when we see something not good happening and how we know that we want to do something but aren't sure what exactly we should do. One of my favorite parts about this book is that it is a wordless picture book. It really drives home the point that you can be an ally without even using your words. That words aren't necessarily needed, but that your actions are so powerful in a situation like this. This story also shares how a simple act of kindness can have a ripple effect and inspire a whole community to stand up to bullying and to show kindness towards each other. The next book that I wanna share with you is Each Kindness by Jacqueline Woodson. Again, that rippling effect comes into play in this story as well. In this story, there's a new student and her name is Maya. She is so excited to be in this new school. And there's another young girl named Chloe. Maya really wants to be friends with Chloe. She sits next to her in class, but Chloe turns away from her when she sits down. Maya goes up to her at recess to show her her toys. Chloe again looks down on her, turns away from her, does not want to play with her. Chloe continues to reject Maya because it's obvious in the story that Maya doesn't have as much money as the other kids in the classroom. Her clothes are a little dirty, a little torn. She's playing with toys that are a little bit older. Chloe just doesn't want to be with her. No matter how hard Maya tries to invite her to do things and play with her, Chloe just continues to turn her away. Then one day in class, their teacher shares a lesson on kindness and how a simple act of kindness is similar to throwing a pebble into water. It has a ripple effect. That one act of kindness can lead to another and lead to another and lead to another. And this really causes Chloe to step back and think. She decides that she's going to show some kindness towards Maya. Unfortunately, Maya has left and does not return to their class. And Chloe really reflects on this and realizes that she missed her chance. She missed her chance to be kind to this new student. She missed her chance for a friendship how if she had just been kind to her from the beginning, they could have had something really special together. This is a great book for older students. It will really get conversations going because there's a lot of reading in between the lines and looking at the illustrations in the picture. And I think older students would really get a lot of, out of this one. The next book that I have that I wanna share with you is this one. I tried to check it out from the library, but somebody else had already checked it out. So I just wanna tell you about it and I'm just gonna show you the picture. <laughs> this book is called The Big Umbrella. I love this one because very simple, and it talks about how on a rainy day, a child brings an umbrella outside, and every time somebody else comes up to them that needs that umbrella, they fit underneath. No matter what the person looks like, how they are alike or how they are different, everyone can fit under this umbrella. And as more people and animals come under the umbrella, the umbrella gets bigger and bigger and bigger and there's always enough room under the umbrella. And I think this really speaks to how our kindness can spread. We don't have a limited amount of kindness. So we can be kind to this person and this person and this person and that kindness will continue to spread to 
everybody around us. So this is another great book that you can use in the classroom to talk about kindness with your students. The next book that I have is one that I will admit makes me cry sometimes. This one is The Invisible Boy. In this story, Brian is a young boy in the class. He's very shy and very quiet, and nobody really seems to notice him. So he's invisible to the rest of the class. And it even shows in the story, he's drawn in black and white in this story. Everything else is in color, but he's in black and white. And that really points out the fact that he's just plain, that no one else really pays attention to him. And in the story, no one is bullying him directly, which might be a different approach than other stories that you might read about kindness. He just is simply ignored. He's not invited to the birthday parties. He's not invited to play with other students on the playground. Nobody wants to work with him in a group project or a partner project. He's by himself, he's lonely, doesn't enjoy being in school because nobody wants to spend time with him. Then one day a new student joins the class, his name is Justin, and Brian is the first one to greet him with a smile and really welcome him into the class. As the days go on, Justin reaches out to Brian and talks to him a little bit. And Brian slowly, if you look at the illustrations, he slowly starts to become colorful. And as they continue to do more things together, Justin wants to be his partner in class. Brian really gets the chance to truly shine. And it's showing that that kindness of reaching out to someone who looks like they're by themselves can have a huge effect on how they feel and on how they share themselves with the world. So even just a small act of kindness as, hey, do you wanna be my partner? Or, hey, you did a great job on that project today. Show students what just that little thing can do to make a difference in somebody else. The next book I have is Be Kind by Pat Zietlow Miller. This one might be my favorite. I haven't really decided. I like all of them, but this one might be my favorite. And stick around because I do have a lesson plan for you on this one. You can see some of the notes sticking out for this one. So I will share with you where you can get that from. In this story, a young girl named Tanisha is in class and she spills grape juice all over her dress and she's so embarrassed. All of her classmates start to laugh when they see this happening, but one child does not. And this child thinks that laughing at this student would not be the best choice. This child tries to reach out to Tanisha to make her feel better, but it doesn't help. So then she reflects and she thinks, what does it mean to be kind? How can I be kind to someone else? How can I be kind to Tanisha in this situation? How can I help her or in any situation that I'm in? So then she talks about different ways that we can be kind, whether it's giving something to somebody or saying their name when we're talking to them or simply paying attention when someone's talking to us, saying thank you to someone. These are all just really great ways to show kindness in such simple everyday ways. And that's one of my favorite takeaways from this book is that there are very concrete examples of how students can show kindness to others in just a simple way. Sometimes I think students overthink what it means to be kind and think it needs to be this grand gesture when really just saying thank you or bless you when somebody sneezes. Those are just very simple ways that they can put into action today. The story goes on as the girl thinks about how her act of kindness can make a difference with Tanisha. And then again with that, going back to the other stories with that ripple effect, if she's kind to one person, they might be kind to someone else and to someone else. And it starts this movement where everyone outside of the school, outside of their city, all across the world are all being kind to one another in different ways. And at the end, she decides that just sitting next to Tanisha in art class and making her a picture might make her feel a little bit better. And on the last page, Tanisha's hanging up the picture that the child gave to her in the story. It shows how that really affected her. Even if she didn't say anything, it really made a difference to her. So when using this book, I put all of my questions on post-it notes and I can stick them right in the book so that they're there when I'm ready to have conversations with my students. In the lesson plan that I'm gonna give you to download, I have all of the questions for you, the discussion questions for you for this story. I also have an I Can Be Kind craft. I have a template that you can download and you can print on either colored paper or on plain white paper and your students can color it in. In the download, there's a cut and paste one and then there's also just a simple worksheet if you're looking for something a little bit quicker to do. In the book, I talked about how one of the simplest ways they share about being kind to others is by just using those words of kindness, like saying thank you or inviting someone to play. And so there's an activity sheet about different things we can say to be kind to other people. And then I also have a set of task cards to really drive home that concept of being kind to 
others and it gives different scenarios and questions for students to ponder and sometimes I do these as a whole class and we have a full class discussion. They can also be done in a center. Students can do them independently or in small groups and then you can come back and talk about them. But that's also included in the download as well. That download link is in the description below. Just click it and you'll be able to download it for free today and use it as soon as you get the book. I hope that these read aloud books about being kind are helpful for you and that you'll be able to share some of them with your students in your classroom. If it was helpful, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and then subscribe to my channel down below because I will be back next Sunday night with more read aloud tips and tricks for your classroom. Have a great week. Also, my puppy wants to say hi. Yay.